All right, so let's go make our cushions now. I'm actually gonna zoom out here and we're gonna kind of start over from our grid. And we're gonna use these two squares to define our seat cushions. So I'm gonna throw down another poly extrude here. And we're gonna just extrude our cushions out from this. And I'm just gonna grab this and bring it up. Let's say another value, let's say a value of 0.2. And let's just output the back. So looking underneath, I'm just gonna tick output back here. And so now I'm gonna add some subdivisions to this to kind of make it look a little bit squishier. Uh, so let's throw on a subdivide node. And let's wire the poly extrude into the subdivide. And I'm just gonna increase the subdivision depth. You can see that it is definitely smoothing things out, but um, we only have one giant uh, pill-shaped oval seat cushion here. And this is a two-seater couch for right now. So we actually wanna have these be two separate cushions. The way we can do that is by using a unique points node. The unique points node will actually take this grid and split it apart into two polygons. So if I throw it on a unique points node, and I'm just gonna drop it on nothing up here and then drag it onto this wire right here, you can see there that it pops apart those two cushions into two separate entities, so to speak. Basically what we're doing is these points are overlapping and they're shared on these corners. And so when we use unique points, it's actually going to um, split these points so that they are not shared anymore. There isn't one point being shared between the two corners of these polygons, but it's actually two overlapping points um, entirely. And that actually defines these polygons as being separated at that point. So now we've got our two cushions. I'm just gonna turn the point numbers off. And let's just increase the crease weight a little bit. So if I tick override crease weight here and just increase that to, let's say a value of 1.15, you can see that we get this more creased look to our cushions. And now I just want to make sure that these squares end up being a little bit more uniform in their dimension. Like on the top here, these squares look very square, but on the side, these squares look very oblong. And I kind of want them to all match a little bit more. I want them to all be more or less square shaped all the way around. The way we can get around that is by adding more divisions up here at this step. So we can actually kind of backtrack a little bit and go up to the unique point section. And let's just throw it on a subdivide here. So I'm throwing it on a subdivide after the unique points, and I'm going to just increase it to a value of a subdivision depth of two. So we get these two four by four uh, rectangles. And now when we go do the poly extrude, you can see that these squares are all looking pretty uniform. And then when we go to subdivide, they're looking uniform uh, even still. So that's going to be good when we want to add something like noise to our cushions to make them look a little bit squishier. So let's do something like that. I'm going to throw it on a no uh, mountain here. Let's throw it on a mountain. And let's wire the subdivide into the mountain. The mountain is a great node that is a huge staple in my Houdini workflow, but it allows you to add different noise patterns to your geometry. And in our case here, it looks like we're starting with, uh, we've, we've got our amplitude here. This kind of controls how intense that noise is. And then we also have the element size, another important parameter. This just controls the frequency of that noise. Now I want a relatively low frequency noise in mine. And so I'm going to go maybe down to this fractal and reduce the roughness down to a value of, uh, let's say maybe zero. And I'll just maybe increase or decrease the element size a little bit and bring the amplitude down to a really low amount. So this, I want this to be just a very subtle distortion of our couch cushions. So I'm using an amplitude of point, let's say 0 0.015 and my element size, we'll just give it a nice 0.5. And so it doesn't look like much, but if I toggle this noise on and off, you can see that it goes from being this very regular shape to this slightly distorted shape. It might just make this a little bit more believable. So we're adding the noise onto our uh, cushions like that. It's looking pretty cool. Now we want to actually have uh, some back cushions as well. So let's actually do what we just did again. So let's actually branch off of this subdivide that we have right here. I'm going to throw down a transform and we're just going to rotate th this back. We're going to rotate that by 90 degrees. So let's uh, rotate here. I'm just going to 
grab this handle. So I'm rotating here. I got my manipulator selected on my transform. I'm rotating and let's see, it's the X axis. So let's just throw in a 90 here. We're rotating at 90 degrees around the X axis. And then I want to do the same thing. I'm going to hold down the alt key and drag over the poly extrude, wire that in. And then I'm going to hold down the alt key and drag over the subdivide and wire that in. And let's also, well, actually we can actually merge these together and do the noise to both of those objects at once. So you can kind of see we're adding noise to our uh, back seat cushions and our seat cushions at the same time. Now our back cushions are in the wrong place. We actually want our back cushions to sit on top of the seat cushion. So this is where another match size node can come in to save the day. So I'm gonna go over here and let's template the seat cushions and put our flag on this subdivide right here and throw it on a match size. We're going to wire in the match size after the subdivide on the right for our back cushions. And we're going to wire in this subdivide for our seat cushions on into the right input of the match size. And here we can justify the Y minimum to the incoming maximum. That's going to set our back cushions on top of the seat cushions. And then we just need to align them to the back. So we can actually justify along the Z axis. We can justify the minimum of our Z axis bounding box to the minimum, the same as the incoming. So those are kind of lined up along the back like so. Now, if we go and we want to add some controls to adjusting the size of our backseat cushions, because if we actually show our frame right now, these are way too tall. We want to have an individual control over these. What we could do is we could go over here and on this transform where we actually change, where we rotate our cushions around, we can actually you know, adjust the scale in the Z axis to kind of adjust our, our, our backseat cushions. So we could do that, but you'll notice that if we grab this grid and start making adjustments to it, it's actually changing both. We only want it to change the seat cushions. So the way that we are going to do this is we're actually going to not apply our transformation here at this step. I'm going to set this scale back to one right here. And then what we're going to do is throw down a match size right here and then apply a transform after. This match size is basically gonna just normalize our uh, polygon along the Y axis. So let's throw down a match size here and I'm going to just, I'm not gonna do any translation. I'm just gonna say scale to fit and I'm not gonna do uniform scale. I'm only gonna scale in Y. So now if we grab our grid up here and we increase the size, you can see the back isn't changing size anymore. Before the match size, it would, it would scale. But now, no matter what the incoming grid size is, this won't change what the size of the back seat cushion is. So then now that we've done that, after the fact, we can add another transform right here that's going to allow us to set that size by ourselves. So here we can just scale it in Y and just scale that down. So, so now when we wire these all together, you can see that we've got our seat cushions and our back cushions and we have independent control over them. Now we can control the size of our couch this way and this way and they correspond and then we can actually adjust the thickness of our cushions like so and everything sits on top of each other nicely. We can also adjust the size of our back cushions independently as well. So things are looking pretty procedural right now. Now that we've got these uh, created, let's merge them together and uh, let's throw it on a null here and call this the cushions. So I'm calling this the cushions and I also wanna label the back cushions. So we'll call, we'll throw it on a null here and call this the back cushions. And we'll go over here and call this the seat cushions. Like so. I'm going to go back up to the grid and just uh, set the size back to a two by one. I'll constantly be resetting this uh, just because, you know, testing and all that stuff. I just kind of want to keep going back to my ground truth, which is uh, a two by one and centered at zero. 
and let's just merge this together now with our frame. So let's turn on another merge here, and we've got our cushions and our frame. I'm going to merge them together. You can see that we've got our, our actual uh, seat cushions are intersecting with the base of our couch. So we actually want to use another match size to throw our cushion system on top of this bottom layer of our couch. This bottom layer or our base can be used as the second input for another match size node. So let's go down here uh, right before our cushions null and we're going to throw down another match size. The match size here and we will reference in the base in that second input like so. And here what we can do is justify the Y minimum to the incoming maximum. So that's setting our cushions right on top of that base. And now when we merge everything together, you can see that the couch cushions are sitting on top of that base piece of geo right there. Looking good. So the next thing I want to do is add some feet. 